Hi there, I'm Chuck Rosansky and I'm the president of Mile High Comics and I want to give you a little bit of an unusual look at comic book retailing today um, and I'm going to start by showing you this little zip line here. Um, this illustrates in sort of a kind of a small way um, what it's like to be a comic book dealer because every month you get to place an order for comics and you have no idea when you're placing this order for comics whether or not they're going to sell. Um, all you know is you're going to step off into space and you're going to put yourself at risk and you might or might not make money. The publishers that you order from are going to make money. Diamond, the distributor, is going to make money. Your landlord's going to make money. And if they're lucky, your staff is going to make money. Um, but whether you make any money or not is highly questionable. Um, but you are at risk. And if you take a look here, um, I went down this zip line last Friday night in front of a fairly large crowd of over a thousand people um, as a part of a stage show that I did. And I just thought that taking a look at this and taking a look at this drop, um, what you're looking at here is the chance to die. Um, there's no safety harness on that zip line, and it's an 18 foot drop. And when I got stuck on it halfway down um, during practice, that was a very uncomfortable feeling being suspended in the air, let me tell you. Um, and I've had many experiences like that as a comics retailer. And yet I and about 2,000 of my brethren continue to do this each and every month until, well, the fates catch up with us and we finally collapse and die. I can't say that it's a bad life, but I just thought that taking a look at this particular little drop would be a small illustration of what we go through on any given month. Let's go downstairs now and talk a little bit more about business models. So here I am at the end of the zip line of doom. If you want to see what it was like for me to do this in a Captain America outfit, take a look at the other video that we just posted along with some of the others that we did from our Denver Comic Con cosplay show. You can see it. But the point that I was trying to illustrate is that you go through a huge amount of risk being a comic book dealer and you play without a net. And that's something that most people don't realize. They somehow think that, oh gee, if you get to be a comic book dealer, you get to read comics all day long. Well, I love reading comics, and I do get a chance every once in a while to read them, but actually, being a comic book dealer means that I get to read fewer rather than more. But why do we do this? I mean, if, if we're risking our houses and marriages and the educations of our children all the time and there are no guarantees and there are no safety nets. Why do we do it? And I have to tell you that the answer comes down to freedom. I've been selling comics for 46 years and during that time, as almost anyone who has dealt with me can tell you, um, I don't take instructions well. I do what I want to do on any given day. That doesn't mean that I don't have to adhere to good business practices. It doesn't mean that I don't have to adhere to ethics and morals and make sure that we give good value all the time. But what it does mean is that if I don't want to cut my hair, I don't cut my hair. If I don't want to shine my shoes, I don't shine my shoes. If I feel like I just don't feel up for going into work that morning, I don't go into work. In this society, that is such a rarity. So many people are stuck in the rut of having to go to a job that they don't care about and that they don't like. The rewards of being a comic dealer are that as long as you can somehow figure out a way to juggle things financially, you can step off of that precipice each month and you can keep going and you can enjoy the freedom of being able to make other people happy, of bringing enjoyment into their lives. 
And it's something that means a lot to me. I mean, I wouldn't be taking this episode and really mentioning that because the money being a comic book dealer actually is crap. If I would have gone into being um, a banker, which was my, my training, I, my training was in finance and marketing, I could have been making six figures, maybe even seven figures easily. But I chose to do this. I chose to get into this wacky world where I go down zip lines and dance around in Captain America outfits and, and sell comic books all day long. And I love it. I just absolutely love it. And I, I love coming into work every morning. I cannot wait to get here. I mean, when I talk about having days when I don't want to come in, they're, they, basically they don't exist. That's because I love what I do. And I love helping people that enjoy comics to step away from their own lives for a little while. If you ever have any thought about being a comic book dealer, bear in mind that you really have to get off on helping other people. Because if you don't, if you're in it just because you want money, just because you want to buy that big screen TV, you're really barking up the wrong tree because the risks are so much greater than the rewards that I don't think that it's really worth it. But if you do like helping other people, if you like comics, if you feel like you want to try and promote comics as an art form, and to really get other people in the world to understand just how evocative graphic storytelling can be, then this is a world that you might consider being a part of. Um, take a look at the videos that we posted from our Denver Comic Con show, and uh, I'll talk to you next week and we'll get a little bit more into just business. Thanks, this is Chuck Rosansky, Mile High Comics. I hope you have a great week.